Hello, ladies and gents. It's time for part number two of day 90, number 365, where we're trying to channel the spirit of I am MVP into our blood. Uh, what we've been doing is just taking a couple of notes. These ones have a little bit to do with the build, but these ones kind of say the same thing, but because I like to beat you to death with points, do not be aggressive with these Hellions when you're doing this double Hellion play. We talked a little bit about the opening. You are now going to be transitioning into getting two barracks. You have your tech labs up. Your goal is to give these reactors to your barracks and then to give these tech labs to the factories. You're going to do this all in very rapid succession. So see, with our 12 Hellions at the front of this base, we can do all sorts of goody goodness damage. Again, not ever trying to poke up to the front of the base, ever, under any circumstance. Trying to stay a little bit pulled back. Now down here, down in camp front of his base, um, getting these two barracks up, building marines, a lot of times you'll want to get one of these upgrades. There's kind of a, a, a deviation point here where you know if he's going for really 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 fast um roaches or banelings or something like that you really kind of need to give those factories over to the tech labs asap mvp will be building himself a bunker and as these numbers get higher with the hellions you can poke and prod a little bit more but mvp does something very not mvp like these two hellions he doesn't pull to the back and he ends up losing them. Oh! Still come to the units lost tab with me. Those are the only two units that he has lost during this entire little foray to the front of his opponent's freaking base. So he is going to see these roaches. And, and still, there are opportunities to suicide into the main to maybe try to kill off a whole bunch of drones. MVP does not take any of them. He's going to begin getting these tanks up ASAP. These marines up in pairs. He's going to build a whole bunch of supply depots because how embarrassing he seems to have forgotten. And MVP is all about conserving units. Conserving, conserving. So now we have some basic ideologies of what to do with our Hellions. We, we're seeing that we need to transition a little bit more into getting our tanks up somewhat earlier. Now, this move might seem a little bit uncharacteristically aggressive. But this is, uh, I guess the word that I always use for this is these are pokes. He's going to come in here and maybe take a couple of shots. He's trying to pull these roaches back, but he's not going to commit in any regard. And as we can see, once he sees the roaches, he just kind of pulls back. Oh no, losing one. Oh no. Rallying everything into his own base. Not being scared of keeping everything up onto the high ground. Not being scared at all. I guess I should say not being scared of being too passive at all. Being straight aggro, word dog. So, at this point in time, the um, part of me wants to, you know, say things like... Well, where the hell are is the starport? Where's the upgrades in particular? Where's the barracks with the um, with all the upgrades coming out of it? Let's come back to this little moment in time where we can talk a little bit more about the build order. Okay, so cool. Uh, get two tech labs for factories, two racks with reactor. All right, cool. We did all our damage with the Hellions early on, and then we went for our Tech Lab factories, and then we went for our Reactor Barracks, and that's great. And this is something that is a consistent theme in MVP's play, which is Marine Tank Aggression plus no upgrades. He does this lots, not just with this double Hellion play, but, I mean, he'll even go single, hel or single factory, with a reactor, swap it with a barracks, so that way he has one factory producing tanks, one barracks producing marines, and then he'll just go. He'll just gun it straight to the front of your base and try to do that killing right off the bat. And 
Many Terran players will think to themselves, well, God, I really need this stim upgrade, or I really need the combat shield. But MVP is very responsible about just advancing with these kinds of compositions. And you're going to see, for the billionth time, how non-committal MVP is with these types of attacks. He has a very nice distribution. These tanks will really murder the roaches. These Hellions will really murder Zerglings. These Marines will just deal a little bit of extra ridiculous damage that are just great. And there it is. MVP now has pretty good control over this space. To emphasize, notice that MVP still has not really added on an engineering bay or a starport or even really any other barracks. There's the first thing going down, but I mean... He has not really added on much else because when you have two reactors, that's pretty expensive to be producing two or excuse me, four Hellions at a time and now four Marines at a time and two tanks at a time. See, MVP is taking a lot of opportunities to walk to his opponent's base and rarely ever committing. I've said that a thousand times because it's the most important aspect of his gameplay all game long. This is the sort of blunder you want to avoid. It is very easy to do this kind of blunder. This is exactly the kind of thing that can get you killed. Everything's looking really good. Come to the Units Lost tab. Oh, howdy doody, everything's so great. Even in the Units tab, we see Zerg is still down at 30 drones. But treat your units like they are the most ridiculously fragile things ever. That if you lose them, then oh my god, your gameplay could possibly be doomed. See, I think this was a real mistake that he shot here. And then he ran up and left like this. Watch his units lost tab. Just, just skyrockets up. Way higher than it needed to. And now all of a sudden, remember how I described this army? These guys murder the roaches. The marines just help deal a little bit of extra damage to everything. And the hellions really murder the zerglings. Well suddenly, that zergling component is way, 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 way more threatening to us. Still no. Hey, look at this. A command center coming up. Opting for more expansions rather than more uh, aggression. But with this cleverly timed marine tanking, you can still be able to put a little bit of pressure on. And interestingly, this game is about halfway done right now. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up because there's nothing too incredibly noteworthy at this point in time. Um, but this game is about halfway done. I'm not going to lie. I think Tude Ming is super dead, right? He, he only has two gas geysers up. He has no layer. Uh, he has a grand total of seven marines. Yeah, looking good. All right, looking good. Feeling great. Um, he has this gigantic-ass army. Hell, if I go to the army supply tab. Wow, I mean, he has more than a Zerg with a mainly Roach force. So, yeah, all signs are pointing to MVP, but he is not going to close this game out. Here's an interesting moment where we're going to see MVP have to deal with a, a crisis. So when we come back to our build, we have Marine Tank Aggression with no upgrades. Feel free to delay Stim Combat Shield. And instead, Marine Tank. Yeah. Feel free to delay Stim and instead just, uh, instead, yeah, Macro. I'll just put it as Macro. Look at that. Yeah, alright. Building a shit ton of marines with no upgrades even started yet. And now, of course, we have the two tech labs coming down. But, you know, all this seems pretty great. It's, it's easy at this point to view this as like, alright, here is step one, step two, step three. To break it into these chunks. Here is something that is not a step at all. It's saying, well, look at how MVP handles... A crisis. A lot of people love to say things like, oh, he has good crisis management. Oh, he has really good response and reaction times. Let us say for uh, a moment that you get caught with your pants down at a time like this. Watch how ridiculously little damage MVP will take. He'll still be in a bad spot, but he will set himself up to take very little damage, immediately pulling all SCVs away. He doesn't even try to do something like repair this bunker like crazy. He does not even try to do something like block with SCVs at the front. He runs, he lifts, 
Uh, in many circumstances, you'll see him salvage this and run these units away. And now he pulls back hard to this back line. This still ends up going pretty poorly for him because, I mean, what the hell else can you do when there's that many Banelings there? MVP does end up doing a good amount of damage. Again, with this nice marine tank aggression, tanks are just totally kick-ass. I think people really underestimate how strong a lot of tanks early can be in this matchup. And now it looks like MVP is feeling a little bit dead. And this is one of the more brilliant things that I think MVP has done. Sure, he lifts up everything. He tries to do a block on the high ground, where he maybe did a little bit better than he could have. Um, actually, I do want to come back to this brief uh, attack moment. It was right here at the front, at the ramp. He does get a few big tank shots off. Yeah, look at that. He killed off a ton of Banelings. The units lost tab, we still see MVP actually came out slightly ahead. After killing off this expansion, he loses his own expansion. He, he still is extending that lead there. Really good stuff. And here's an absolute moment of brilliance. Once he kills off this base, he just says, Alright, cool, and pulls back home. There's a generally very clever thing, which is where you leave 10% of your army to go kill a base, and the other 90% pulls back. Not really splitting in half, just fragmenting a tiny, tiny, tiny chunk. And MVP honestly is looking, you know, a little bit, a little bit dead in his main base. I mean, the unit station, look at that. Two workers, the 24. But again, MVP. Let's see how he would describe this. Comfortable running during crisis moments. When these were attacked, he was totally comfortable pulling everything back, having all his workers not mining. Comfortable running during crisis moments. Conserving as much as possible during crisis. I cannot tell you how easy it is if a whole bunch of stuff runs into your base to do one of these, oh, oh my gosh, and try to pull everything back and to throw your workers into the mix to build like seven bunkers how common how how many times does that happen to you Terran players out there that the Protoss army starts coming at you and you're like holy crap and you build like nine bunkers and hope that maybe three will finish mid battle and you have all your SCVs repairing not what MVP does instead MVP is comfortable running during crisis moments conserving as conserving as much as possible during crisis notice how this these things that I have highlighted don't really fall in any specific moment at any point in this game. It's just a general theme that you will see. And that's one thing that we really want to pick up on ourselves, is how to incorporate that style into our style. MVP, gonna just be content Research defending. Complete. Gonna be content just massing up a good amount of Marines. Now, how often would you do this? I have said multiple times in this daily, he takes opportunities to be aggressive, but never really commits. Look at this. He just lost everything. He has four freaking workers. And he sieges up his tanks, ready to defend, and then just takes his marines and walks forward and makes sure that, you know, maybe the watchtower is free. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take this watchtower. Who the hell does MVP think he is? He's just going to waltz his way forward and he plants down a scan. He's going to begin wandering around, and oh my gosh, he actually can do a little bit more aggression stuff like this. I think that was probably a little bit over-aggressive, but if he pulled to here, and then pulled back home, that would be very much so the spirit of MVP. And now, that dumbass is going to have to rebuild all his freaking units. What an idiot! Why did he overcommit there? Roar. Pretty cool game thus far. Pretty freaking cool. And you know, I actually just want to take some brief questions from the chat before we go step away into part three. Let's just take one or two questions about what people are thinking and feeling about MVP style at this point in time.
Uh, oh yeah, uh, one one person asking about the sweater for Manfred BlizzCon. Yes, I did receive it, as well as uh, that awesome hat up there. Uh, a poster from someone who heard that I didn't get any posters. Heart you, and uh, of course a My Little Pony. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take this. So um, aha from Grandpa SC. Grandpa SC says, "How does MVP transition out of this if his opponent goes heavy roach?" as soon as he sees a reactor factory. I see this a lot at gold level. Just mass two base roach to force me out of Hellions. That's a great question. Um, before we step into part three, let's actually come back and just answer that question a little bit more in depth. So right now we're at this kind of crazy part in the game. What Grandpa SC is asking about is about this moment right here. Um, we're making Hellions. We're doing damage. Things are seeming good. And in this specific game, there's the Roach Warren just getting started after some clear damage has been done. What if we were maybe two minutes prior, we were just finishing up our Hellions, we walk in here, and we see, oh crap, there's some Roaches in here. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward transition. You should make probably 8 to um, 12 Hellions. Or if you don't lose the first two, somewhere between 10 and 14 Hellions. No matter how many Roaches he has, you will still be able to completely overrun 3, 4, 5, even 6 Roaches with your Hellion numbers. He'll keep making Roaches, and then you just simply switch these factories to building tanks a lot sooner, and maybe you'll have a reactor with nothing on it. Your tool for transitioning is how quickly you get those reactor uh, excuse me, how quickly you get those tech labbed factories. If you really are worried about roaches and banelings, do it a little faster. If you are really worried about a lot of zerglings, do it slower. Just go hellions like nonstop. In fact, in a great game between Marine King Prime and um, Liquid Hay Pro from MLG, Marine King saw that his opponent was going ling baneling and trying to get Mutilus up. So he never gave those factories tech labs ever at any point. He just kept making Hellions until he eventually broke down the front door and won. If they're going for more Mutilus and more Ling Baneling, do it a lot later. If they're going for Roaches, get the Tech Labs up a lot sooner. I think that is a perfect question to let us step into part number three. So whatever you do, do not go anywhere. This daily will continue momentarily. Oh, so moment-frickin'-tarily. <laughs> 